All right. So we're going to do something we haven't done in a while. It's to review a double-digit Q game. This game was sent in by one of my Patreon supporters. Uh, so hi, Thomas, if you're out there watching this. Hey, here's your game. You're now famous. Uh, Thomas has been playing Go for about six months, and he's attained the rank already of 14Q, which is great. Um, but he specifically wanted to know what to do in a handicap game. So he sent me this game and was like, hey, what is a, what should a 14Q do in a handicap game? And uh, I suspect many of you are not 14Q. Uh, some of you are better, some of you are worse. Um, and so some of these things I'm going to say are probably pretty, you know, some of them are going to definitely be universal, but a lot of the moves in this game, we're definitely, they're definitely 14Q moves for better or worse. So uh, let's, let's dig in and just, and just go for it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so far, again, black three stone start, sure, normal placement. Uh, if you do other rule sets, you can actually have free placement of the handicap stones, which is pretty cool. But anyway, uh, as, as a first move, sure, fine. You, you really can't go wrong. I don't really care what you play here. Um, it might be worth to just think this is probably better, right? Just approaching is a little more active, but that's fine. All right, white immediately plays here, and black comes up with a really interesting move as a response, right? The two normal moves here are for black to attach and for something like this Joseki to happen, uh, which is a pretty good result for black. Um, this corner is huge. Yeah, there's still a little bit of Aji here with this, but black plays anything else in this Aji just goes right away. Uh, and that's a huge, that turns into a huge corner. So this is seen as a good Joseki for black. Other Joseki choice is black here. And uh, also good choice for black. Not as big of a corner, but white's base is undercut, can actually be attacked, and you get the first move to take a side over here. Um, also good. Both of these are good. Black, however, plays this move, which is really interesting because white responds. And so it actually is exactly like if white played here and black kicks. Uh, and again, before the days of Elfgo, we'd say this is bad for black, but now this is actually just kind of fine. This is just one of the variations. So black gets an okay variation, but I think the other variations are still better, where you should probably, your first your first instinct when white uh, approaches high is to play here or attach. Anyway. You're 14Q, you don't know these patterns yet, so that's fine. I think I think this is something I really can't yell at you for. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna point out stuff that you don't know yet. Um, but wait, I'll, I'll, I'll yell, I'll, I'll, we'll get to the point where I'm gonna have to yell at you for stuff, because that's that'll come up. All right, so your 11Q opponent thinks it's a good idea to press here. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> this is, your opponent is, is doing you a major favor because you just connect here, now your corner is super solid. Before this happens, you actually have a little bit of an invasion possibility for white here. Uh, and if white has the ladder, uh, there's even this type of variation where white can force you here and then peep at this and then possibly connect this way. Um, and now later on, there's this kind of code to take the corner. Uh, so anyway, this this exchange for white is really bad. And I, and I just, I want you to recognize that. Like if you don't feel like this is bad, you need to go and review this shape. Um, because now all of a sudden this Aji for white has just gone away. There's just nothing for white to do in this corner. And what did white get? White got a stone here. Is this stone useful? Not at all. Like we didn't actually increase the liberties on this group at all. We had five liberties before. Oops, sorry, we had five liberties now. We had five liberties before. Terrible exchange for white. Like this is very good result for black. White makes a nice little base here. That's good. And black has Sente again. What do you do with it? Well, you approach this way. This very loose approach is the type of move you make when you're worried about getting pincered and this area is very important to you. Uh, <clears throat> neither of these things are true. You actually don't mind a pincer at all and this area is not important to you, or at least not more important than any, any other area. So if you're going to approach, you have to approach uh, more closely. And you can, I think you can argue that you can approach from either side here and be just fine. I don't think one is game winning versus the other. They're both completely playable. Um, so we're doing this sort of special case approach Joseki when there's no, this is just normal opening stuff. Uh, white plays here. Now this is interesting because if this stone, let me get out the little edit tool. Oops, uh, I just, is it shift? Yeah, shift. Um, this is actually a, a Joseki when on the 4-3 point. Um, and white will play here and black will come down. Like this is actually a pretty normal uh, Joseki. Um, white's a little bit cr more crammed into the corner. Um, so black has a little bit less play in there. So black is actually happier to take the outside. In this case, um, none of these things are true anymore. <laughs> Here, let's actually go back to the game, go back to the play tool. Um, so in this case, I think white actually is better off just building this way. Letting your stone just float out here, not touching it is fine. Um, so again, this is another major, may not major, but 
not as big as this one. Let's say this was a major mistake. I don't think white recognized how big of an advantage this gave black because uh, this ruined any Aji in the corner. Anyway, white goes here. Uh, and I think, I think this, this is a, this is okay, but I think this descending is fine. Um, because again, if it plays out like the other variation where you just build a wall and white takes the corner, white needs one more move to actually take this corner. If white goes and is like, I'm going to go attack your wall. You just go, bam. And white's like, oh, I don't want my corner. I don't want to attack you. I don't want my corner. Well, uh, yeah, maybe actually in this case you want to play that one. Um, white's corner got really small, right? You just sort of stepped right into it off of the stone. And if white, uh, you know, comes down like this, uh, you actually can go either way in this case. But even if you just do this very peaceful way, um, if white defends this way, you have a good move here, and you can actually eat the corner from this side. That's kind of a cool sequence. <clears throat> uh, so if white has to block here, you still eat the corner this way and can dodge out to this stone. So again, we're, white white is not able to defend this when these stones are further out. Um, white really needs to take an extra move, and then you can take another big point, and or maybe actually better big point is probably over here. Um, but black can build something really large on the outside. Okay. Anyway, this move, eh, not so great. White plays here, <clears throat> and I think locally that's a good move. Um, and in this case, you tanuki, which I think is fine. Like I, th I think I think actually this this for this is actually reason like <laughs> let's say more than reasonable for a fourteen q. Like you could you could say this is actually a good a fine exchange to to allow to happen um, even at higher levels. Um, partially because black already has a stone here, and for black to let's say block here, this feels a little bit tight. So anyway, I think that's fine. Uh, white takes the stone. It's slow, but it's powerful. <clears throat> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest it's too slow. I think this is actually a bad move for white. But it's again, it's a slight minus. It's still a positive move. This move, however, we need to talk about. All right. Um, <clears throat> what are you hoping for here? Are you hoping for white to connect? But why would white... What are you threatening? Because if white does something, you're going to cut, and then white's going to kill your stone anyway? Like, this doesn't work. This is just a ladder to death. So... It looks like this is a move that looks like a peep, but it's actually doing nothing. And you're and if you're thinking, oh well, if white does this, I'm gonna save this stone. Well, white's just gonna connect, and now you have two stones that are still not healthy. Like wait, this is this is a nothing move. This is really not a you're not getting that much. Um, it looks like you're building the top and threatening something, but you're really just mildly building the top, where if you wanted to build the top, it'd just be better just to do this. So not not so great move there. Uh, and actually, that is the game, right? You peep. And actually, sorry, that's not the game. And instead of white tanukiing, because this isn't a threat, white's like, I kill your stone. Nope. Nope. All right. You got away with one. This this is this is, this is, is the type of move where if you're playing against other Q players around your level, um, it, this is a good result for black, <laughs> right? But it should not be. You play against someone a little bit stronger, this is where you, you lose a lot of your efficiency. This is where you lose the game essentially but you don't realize you're losing it right with these sorts of exchanges um, except white because white responded white didn't actually get the full benefit of this exchange like this exchange is where white can make up one of those handicap stones right you started with three stones on the board when you play this white should immediately come here or jump in the corner or you know do something you use sente so that was an opportunity for white to get his one of his handicap stones back essentially and he plays here. So right now, Black's having a great game. Like, like even though White isn't uncomfortable, uh, this corner is solid. You've got potential on the left, a little bit at the top. Um, and this corner is still open. Black can actually still just play here and just eat. This isn't even territory yet. So this is still a good game for Black. All right, this move, this involves reading a ladder. You didn't read the ladder. And I think you figured it out. But it took you a little, it took you a move. So again, this is just, you got to take the time and read the ladder. It looks like you guys still have plenty of time on the clock. So you just got to do it. And that's something you can do at 14Q. You should be able to read this ladder out. And I think you do. It just takes you a moment to figure it out. Um, yeah, especially when you're, whenever you have a weak stone that you want to save, um, this is not a hard read. Like this, this, this is something you, you can do if you just settle down and take your time doing it. But perhaps even more importantly, why do you want to save this stone? Is it so you can make this cut a thing again? 
Like if this if this stone runs out, let's say let's say you know White has to do something like this, and you're like, aha, I saved my stone. But then White's just gonna come back here and connect anyway, right? It's it's like it's like yeah, you eventually get the value from this move, but White is actually much stronger now. Um, and we'll will actually this having a White stone here means White will invade over here much more readily. Like it actually makes you weaker. It's not. Yeah, it's it's like one way you can sort of officially get the value from this J17 stone, but it's not a good exchange to begin with. Anyway, uh, you invade the corner. This is fine. Uh, gonna be better if you didn't make this exchange first, but you can do this. Uh, this move is not correct. In this case, you have to play this way first, and it should end up looking something like this. Um, you know, it should end up. Yeah, how about that. <laughs> But in the game, oops, that's not the game. You play here first. White takes, which is a little bit soft. Um, white, white is overly concerned about these two stones. In this case, I think white should just play here. And if if you're like, aha, I can save these stones now. Well, that's great, but you lost these in the corner, and you know, I you can't save them, right? Once you you know, if, you, if you spend time fixing the inside, right? White is going to connect here and weaken your outside. Um, there's also this problem down here of these four stones are a target, and so white has attachments and things like this where you really can't um, you really can't uh, act strong, right? White will just cross cut and cut across here and then capture your four stones. So white white should, white just didn't play very strongly here. White just captured, which is safe, um, but does give you a chance to live. You don't need this to live. Just connect, just connect, and then you can come back and play there. So if you play here, you're giving white a chance to get a better result, which white takes advantage of. And then here, this is not um, this is actually not the move. Uh, I think the move you need to play is here, and this is a little bit more tricky life and death reading. Um, um, but you can live this way. If you play this move, white should play here. And then your next move gets really hard. Uh, actually, no, are you fine? I thought, uh, I assumed you were dead, but no, actually you're fine maybe. Okay, all right, you can live both ways because you have a stone here and only because you have a stone here and here. If these two stones were not here, you'd be dead. Um, yeah, if white has to block here, then you can live that way. Okay, so you shouldn't die. But in the game, uh, you decide to play here. White blocks here. So now you can come back and still live here. But in the game, you played this. And this should be a co. White misplayed. White should play here. And to make two eyes, you'll have to play here. But then at any point, white can throw in and make this co. So I think this is just a reading thing you missed. At this point, uh, this co is gone because you should just play here. And you can just prevent the code that way and live nicely. But you don't. You play here. Okay, that lives too. Never mind. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> I miss a move. All right, I misspoke. I misspoke. I got I got excited because of the last uh, co. <laughs> Thought I could find co's everywhere. Yeah, after this point, there's there's it should just be co. Like no choice. Co. Have to play there. Co. Um, but here you're alive. No problem. Okay, good. You lived. Uh, this is Sente, but you just solve it. And then White finally takes Sente to go here. So let's let's talk about this variation. Um, well, who was this result good for? Well, it was actually much better for White. And part of the reason is because um, White got a lot stronger on the outside. And this is one of the reasons why we um, want to protect this stone here. If you remember this stone, we left it kind of hanging. And you block this way. I don't... I, I'm... Like in the in now we're in the era of AlphaGo. Like I don't. It's hard for me to actually make a case that either side is the wrong way to block anymore. Like previously, I would tell students you want to block towards the bigger side and build the bigger side. But um, with all the new variations, I I can't even say that anymore. Right? Like it's it's just not even true. Um, so you guys play this one. This is fine. Uh, yeah, that's a variation. Uh, this move is not a move though. This you just gotta connect. Uh, and if you're scared of something like this. Um, keep in mind, you have this move, and White will likely fight you here. But then you get a big, a big benefit in the corner. If White insists 
on taking this, now you have two options. You can fight this way if you think these two stones are strong enough. And if you're feeling a little bit more like your chicken, you just come on top and continue building. White will have to come back and do something like this, but you just build up more strength on the outside and connect it to your stones. Those would be very reasonable results. Giving up a stone here is not a reasonable result. Because uh, number one, there is a co here. Um, white, I think, is right not to start it. Uh, but this this just screams of overplay, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, so I guess you have the ladder. Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to sneeze. Let me sneeze. Let's move the mic. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I can't sneeze on camera. Mm. Let's drink some coffee. Okay, I think it's passing. Uh, this is one of those moves that it feels like, even if white can't take advantage of it, it feels like you need to play another move. Um, if white were to take advantage of it, I can see this being kind of a really dangerous fight. Because now you're worried about these cuts. And maybe you're like, hey, I can come down here and make a base for this group. Uh, but can you really? Like, do you have time to do this? I guess you do. If you have to submit like this, though, I don't know, kind of. All right, well, actually, we need to protect this stone. Never mind. I forgot about this. <laughs> Block has to protect this stone somehow. I don't know. Black probably doesn't have time. Um, this this would be the violent way. I don't know how this fight ends up without without thinking about it for a longer period of time than I want. Um, but that, that, this is, this is banking on the strength of these stones versus the strength of the white stones. Um, so certainly white could play a move like this or this Hane first and then decide on what to do. Uh, but actually that's the game. It turns out, <laughs> um, after this move, oh man, this cut feels obligatory. White does not take advantage of it. White cuts on this side, too small, giving just fix your group here. And even though you didn't actually get much, um, I'm very scared that worse things will happen to you. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess uh, actually black, you can play that moves fine. You can play that one. This move is terrible. Don't play this ever. This is just, what are you doing here? Are you threatening to kill? You're not threatening to kill at all. You're threatening to die. First of all, those three stones. Oh, you say that. Look at that. There's your comment. I always do that. That's the game. Now, granted, this is actually a bad way for this to end for you um, compared to what you could get because you're just getting three stones and you're actually make, making the, the weakest black group on the board. I'm oh, sorry, not you, white, your opponent. This is the weakest, This is the, you got lucky again. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Black got lucky because really um, white should ask for more. <laughs> like I'm going to run the stone out. I'm going to attack this as a large group and I can attack this as a large group. Remember, you have, white has stones over here. So even though it looks like you have plenty of eye space, uh, if you play move over here, White can play this move just directly. And you can be like, hey, I can make eyes, right? Well, uh, kind of. <laughs> uh, not really. Well, actually, I guess I guess maybe maybe you can make two eyes, but it's you get sealed in if you do, if you just cower and make two eyes. Um, this doesn't quite falsify the eye because of this move. You can connect here or push out. All right, so maybe, maybe actually this move actually helps. <laughs> Just enough secure two eyes, but it shouldn't be the type of move you're looking for. It's too small. You want moves that do multiple things. It certainly doesn't threaten the corner, right? So it really just barely helps your eye space. Whereas you just be much better off just, just fixing the shape. Now you're so much stronger on the outside. Whew, easy game for black. Even though white got a lot of strength here, you got a lot of strength here. So it's okay. Not a good move. All right, white cuts, but then just takes the three stones. And again, you're sad about it in the game, but you should be quite happy. Like, this is fine for you. Um, you're still getting strong on the outside. Uh, and if you're saying, hey, uh, I don't want to... You, you should probably turn here. This turn's pretty big in terms of liberties. And maybe even read this and saw that this turn isn't good because white has the snapback shape. Well, you can still play here. And you can still double Hana here. You actually have a pretty powerful sequence. Um, even though it's snapback, you can eventually Atari one something. 
if white doesn't keep responding, right? If white tanuki's here, you can Atari here, and then you can Atari here, and then white has to take it anyway. And look at this outside thickness. Look at you completely sealed white in. Isn't that great? I think that's great. Uh, so, um, white thinks he got real profit, but he really shouldn't. He should still kind of get sealed on the outside. And so, hey, anyway, this type of move, you've already done this up here. Um, this is this is a problem uh, in your game in general, where you aren't quite reading the shapes well enough to their to their completion. And so, instead of playing the last few moves that you need to play or the moves to finish the shape, you're dodging. And uh, you will get stronger the second you actually finish these shapes a little bit more. Now, there's a, I, I'm, there's a real danger here that when you finish these shapes, you are playing Gote moves like here, like N19, it looks like it finishes the shape or something. Um, that's not the kind of move. It's these moves that really have access to the center, that have repercussions throughout the board, that are really big, thick moves that you're not finishing. All right, so anyway, okay, white takes, and then for some who knows drug-induced hallucination reason, you play this move. And if, you know, you've been playing six months, you're 14Q, you got some skills. I assume you've been watching my videos, you've been supporting them, which I'm very thankful of. You should know empty triangles are bad. And they're bad because these two stones are already connected, and you don't actually need to ever play uh, this move until white plays there. If white plays there, then this move's great. And if white plays here, you play this move, and that's great. And sometimes, yeah, you want to play an empty triangle to poke at your opponent's shape or have some other effect out here. But what are you poking? Like, this is... This is... I don't, I'm not going to say it's worse than passing, but, you know, if, if, if you can play the best move on the board, that's 100%, and you can pass, which is... I guess passing isn't even the worst. You can do worse moves than passing. <laughs> so maybe, let's say there's negative percentage moves on this scale, but let's say passing is 0%. This is... Um, like a 5%, like this is a 5 out of 100 kind of move, like it's useful here, like you, it helps connect a stone out here, but if it's if it's useful for connecting a stone out there, you can just play that move directly, <laughs> right? So it's like a 5 out of 100 kind of move. And this is a type of move, I don't know how you concluded to play this. Uh, especially since white apparently wants to run the stone out now. You didn't seal white in, white has a strong group here, so you can actually cut this um, normally this, this stone wouldn't have a good place to run to, but you've actually given a lot of confidence. Oh god, there's a toddler attacking the green screen. Dad? Yeah? You want to be in the video? Yeah. yeah you want to be on camera? Yeah. Alright, here we go. I want to see Daddy. You, there's Daddy right there. That's it. Yeah, you're on the screen too. You can look over there and see and see yourself. Daddy's doing a Go Game review. No, don't touch the microphone. <laughs> see Daddy Go Game. Yeah, Daddy's reviewing a Go Game on camera right now. Okay, go see Mommy. Go see mommy. Go. Leave. Go. Go. Go away. Yeah, here. Crawl. Go crawl. Do you want to crawl? Yeah. Tunnel? Cave? Yeah. Go under the cave? Yeah. Go under the cave. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here you go. You get to do this now. Don't touch anything. Uh, okay. Sorry. Anyway, that's a bad move. And then white's going to run you out and challenge for these two stones. And even though you play this extra stone, it's actually not that useful. White can actually split them. Too loud. I, I know I'm talking too loud, but that's because I'm, I have a microphone and I'm being recorded. I want it too loud. No, I, I know you want it too loud, but that's not your job right now. Uh, white invades. That's good. Um, oh, hey, don't do that. Hey, do you see mommy? All right, bye bye, buddy. Uh, I think this move's good, but you're so strong over here. I really want to wouldn't want to give Black the opportunity. My screen all messed up now. That better. All right. I wouldn't want to give Black the opportunity to unite all of his stones. So if I were Black, I'd play something like this. And uh, actually, it's really hard for Black to find a move here that makes this side of the board safe. Actually, probably just that. I think that's best. But even then, um, white will reduce it this way. Actually, this would be okay. This would be okay for black. I would play this as black. Because um, even though white's so strong and you have to play a little bit fearful, um, white it feels like white could have caused a much bigger, complicated fight situation. So 
Actually, this is kind of what happens in the game, right? Good. All right, so, so the direction here is good. So in this case, I would look at this move and go, look, as white, that is not you. Um, look, white is really strong here. Uh, I have to make you, you have to make use of your thickness to attack. Here's what you attack, and just throw a stone right there. And if black tries to settle, you know what? That's great. Um, in this case, maybe now you play this way? I'm not sure if you need to jump out first. Um, once this gets really strong, this you can still undercut this base over here. This actually isn't two eyes yet. Um, so if white gets a little bit stronger in the center, then you can undercut the base and kill, or just completely surround in and uh, white can take advantage of the center. So anyway, I'd be, I'd be more scared of something like this. Playing here, it gives you an opportunity to fix, which you do. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to do anything complicated. <laughs> I think you play that, play that. This again, I'm scared of this wall, and I want you to be scared of that wall. Uh, so it looks like you get a good you actually get a good result here, because <laughs> your opponent's being very submissive and not taking sente. Uh, okay, do you defend again? Uh, all right, so this move doesn't do well as much as you think it does. Like, this is one of those cases where it's probably better just to play a shape move. Because this honey doesn't accomplish anything, it still leaves defects. So, all right. Uh, so yeah, so white comes around. Oh, you actually get a lot here. Oh, wow. All right, so white was dumb. And not dumb in like a local sense, but dumb in a grand strategy sense. Uh, white decided to, instead of invading here, just let you build this into 30 points of territory for this wall here. And the question is, what does this wall get white? Uh, not much yet. Like, white needs to have another couple stones over here before this is worth the 30 points um, otherwise. All right, so you're going to run this out. Um, I'm now more scared of running this out because white has a wall, but I see what your objective is. Uh, I kind of wonder what happens if white just plays here. Um... Maybe that's not even violent. Maybe white can play more violent, something more violent. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, here's what I'm thinking, right? I'm looking at white and going, look, white, this, this is actually pretty weak at this point after this move, so I don't think you have to be too scared for these three stones. But white would like to either cut this stone off, cut these three stones off, or just build 30 points here himself. And so I'm trying to find a way to play a sequence of moves that threatens to do all three of those things. Instead, white's going to push again. Um, oh, you have a defect over here, right? This is, uh, yeah, I guess it's a pretty, it's pretty big defect. Uh, but again, these two stones probably aren't that important. So, yeah, I guess I, I think Tanuki's good. I think this might, this is, I don't like this point. I think this point um, invites a fight that you don't want to have. Uh, because at the very least, white can cut you here. But I'm thinking white will do... Oh, no, sorry, white can't cut you there. No, nope, this is all a lie. This is actually... Is this move good? <laughs> Did you play a really good move? Hmm. I'm not used to this position when you already have a stone here. <laughs> Remember this exchange? If you don't have this here, this this is an overplay, right? Like, this, this is too thin. Like, you're going to get... There's going to be a problem. <laughs> Uh, it even just seems like uh, white can probably start this way. And wherever you play here, white will cut. Um, if you play this way, maybe maybe it's not so bad. All right, maybe I lied. I feel like there's got to be a problem here. All right, maybe this move's better, or I just haven't figured out how to def beat the shape yet. A screaming overplay to me, though. But it's really not that bad. It's really, it's really not bad. All right, good. I'll, I'm, I'm surprised at how well this move works. Um, it still looks like there's odd, like that's really bad, Aji. I'd be really tempted to play this move. This looks so much better to my eye. Um, because it looks like you're inviting White to take more points here. But if White does, this is so small compared to the safety and the points that you got for yourself. So, okay, I can't find a really good reason why this move doesn't work yet, <laughs> or why you shouldn't play it yet. Maybe something like this is probably the way to go. Um, 
not really sure what black should do here, actually. Actually, probably this. Uh, this looks safe enough. Is it safe enough? It's complicated. So this kind of fight, maybe this is not safe enough. Okay, this seems good for white now, because <laughs> white can attack this. All right, maybe that's maybe that's something along those lines. What should happen? But anyway, um, good. I would just err on the side of one level safety or safer. This move. This is not a move. Good for you. Your opponent uh, helped you. Uh, this is better. Take away the liberty. You don't. You don't care if white takes this Atari. I guess you might care slightly at this peep, but the white had that peep. Eh, I guess you do care about that peep. All right, your move's fine. This is fine. I guess that's fine. Okay. Here, white's asking to escape. What do you respond? You attack. Okay, good. Keep the pressure on. Um, I'm not... I haven't read this out. I'm not sure it's actually possible to kill this. Let's just play out. A few more moves. White connects out. Okay. Um, here, here, here. This is really dangerous. <laughs> Um, okay, another move. This exchange might be okay. What happens if white plays here now? White doesn't play there in the game. Oh, white actually can't, or black can't kill us directly, right? Because there's that problem. So if black disconnects, black can play here to threaten and then capture this way. All right, so there is there is a problem here for black. You play here, take this Atari. Okay, fine. And then white plays there. Does this work better? This works significantly worse, right? <laughs> like much worse? Because here, here, here. Now you need to play another move on this side. I guess you play that one. What's this capturing race situation? Three to three. So we don't have... Do we have time? We do. We do have time. Because that puts you at four liberties and now you can come back. All right. So if that if that was basically what I needed to read, all, all I just concluded was that this move for white is significantly worse than this one. Way worse. Uh, but white plays here. And instead of, I think you got to connect this way, right? Like you gotta connect this way, because then you just kill. All right, so you missed you missed a really important connection, which is why this didn't work the way for you it should. You actually don't need to give these two stones up. And this is just reading, like this is just reading. Um, and white gets to connect here. And after white connects, um, there's actually more Aji on this side now. White has this stone and this weak stick. Uh, so I'm gonna bet white can even play moves like this to come inside here, maybe even deeper. Um, White connects here for I don't know what reason. There's no reason. White's not defending anything. And you actually get to fix. So that's that's another mistake, another opportunity. So um, again, you're not you're not getting punished nearly enough. And that worries me because you're playing a lot of these moves that, you know, these empty triangles and uh, moves that, uh, yeah, a stronger player will eat. <laughs> uh, what do we think of this move? Are you fine? Looks like you're you're fine. Okay. So this is actually partially because of this stone, right? I think you're still alive. I think if you didn't have this stone here, I think I'd be very worried about dying. Hey, look at that. You came back and fixed at the point I wanted to play to begin with. Imagine if we didn't play this move. We could just have played this one and wouldn't have to fix right now. Um... It's not actually convinced you actually need to fix right now, and that way you could probably fix better. But anyway, uh, here I was going to fast forward to the end of the game. I think the game is already pretty decided at this point because once you get to make this right hand side into points and you use the weakened stick to do so, your left hand side is huge. You even have a few points at the top and in the corner. And there's just no points on this board for white. Like, white never took advantage. Um, so. You know, I guess the moral of the story is if you want a really good game review where you learn a lot, send me a game that you'll lose because I know a lot of my comments here had to do with white mistakes. And sure enough, white did not 
uh, take advantage enough of your mistakes to win the game. You made too many of his or her own. And so let's see what the final score is. Yeah, thirty point win. That's a that's a big win. Um, so anyway, in conclusion, uh, I think I think if you learn anything, this is this is just a this is this is like the the turning point of the game, right? At this point, when White makes that move, um, I know it's such a small thing, but it hurt. It's so it happens so early, and that that just gives you an advantage, right? You never have to worry about this corner, right? There's just no fighting now in this corner. And if as a go player, you have to feel like that's a really big deal. Um, if you have some, whenever I get a group on the board that just feels locked down, kind of safe, like that's a victory, right? That's like, hmm, I can now, I, I can now have fun elsewhere on the board. I have less to worry about. I can spend my time, uh, spend my, t my clock time, that is, reading attacking sequences rather than defending sequences. So, yeah, don't peep at a cut that doesn't do anything. There's your second lesson. So anyway, Thomas, this is a very nice game. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, I'm glad to see you're playing some handicap games against some stronger play people. I know I just kind of <laughs> bitched about you not playing strong enough people who call you out on things. Um, obviously, that's exactly what you're doing, but your opponent just didn't call you out on anything. Um, I was playing a little bit too fair, I guess, and not looking for your mistakes. Uh, I hope you got something out of this review, um, and, you know, we'll look forward to see how you improve. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you.